Printing inside of an enclosure can cause some unintended consequences in the quest for better printing results. One of the issues is it gets hot in the enclosure, which is something you actually want, but it's nothing that your stepper motors want. Your stepper motors are being used constantly. If you have something like a BMG extruder, it's getting turned three times as much than a standard extruder due to the three to one gear reduction. Consequently, you have stepper motors on every single axis. And if you're like me, you have two stepper motors for the Z-axis. Granted, the Z-axis doesn't get a lot of movement compared to all the other axes. Now, here's the thing. When the enclosure is doing its thing, keeping everything hot, it is also keeping your stepper motors really hot. So you'll need to find a way to cool them down. These stepper motors have heat sinks with thermal epoxy, well, something like thermal epoxy. It's a, it's a sticky pad that has thermal conductive properties to it. And these heat sinks are cooled passively. If they had a fan on top of the heat sink, they would cool the stepper motors even further. However, one thing that I do not have, or one motor that I do not have a heat sink on currently, is my stepper motor for my extruder. And as I was saying before, it's spinning three times as much as it normally would because of the BMG drive going from a 1 to 1 to a 3 to 1 reduction ratio in order to get more torque. So, this motor in particular gets quite hot. And because my BMG is a clone and it's made of all metal, it too will conduct heat. That's a problem because the heat will transfer from the stepper motor to the extruder to the filament. And sometimes when printing in an enclosure with something soft like PLA, it's enough heat to make the filaments inside where the gears are get warm enough to become malleable. Now that's an issue because when that happens, the filament wraps around the gear and it will just clog up the extruder, the filament will snap somewhere, you'll no longer be extruding plastic, and you're going to have a headache on your hands for a little bit as you clean everything out, which often means disassembling a lot and trying to get everything back to normal. I've had this happen several times when printing inside of this enclosure. Now, this is not a heated enclosure, this is just passively reflecting heat back and it covers everything. So the only heat that builds up is what naturally builds up from the bed mainly. So what I'm going to do is take my handy dandy thermal gun here and we're going to take some base readings, right? So keep in mind reflective surfaces do not read very well with devices like this. But I've got my bed set to 65 degrees Celsius. If I point my little temperature gun at the bed, it's about that. So we're reading relatively accurately. Let's take a measurement of the motor. 41 degrees Celsius. And I'm trying to stick, keep, it, keep it right in the middle there. So 41 degrees Celsius. If I try and aim it at the heat sink, 40 degrees Celsius, around there. And let's compare that to the one stepper motor that doesn't have any cooling. 43 degrees Celsius, two, we got some variation, about 43. And then let's take a measurement of the BMG, 39 degrees Celsius, we get some readings. And I'm moving up and down here. Somewhere between 39 to 40 degrees Celsius. Now that temperature is with the enclosure open. What we're going to do is we're going to close this enclosure. And after it's heated up, we're going to see how hot everything gets afterwards. We're going to let it run for an hour or so and come back and see. 
So the printer has been printing for over an hour now, and what we're going to do is open up the enclosure and rescan those components that we had scanned originally. So we'll start with the Y axis motor. We are now at 50 degrees Celsius. 50. 53, somewhere between 50 and 53. And then we'll scan the X axis. We're about 48, 49, somewhere around there. Scan the extruder. 53, approximately 53 degrees Celsius, give or take. And then the extruder, which is 51 degrees Celsius. So the heat travels up from the extruder, or from the, um, I'm sorry, the stepper motor up to the extruder. And because this extruder is all metal, it's transferring to the plastic. Now, that's probably not enough to melt anything. But it might be enough to cause the plastic to become a little bit malleable if the gears are tight and cause it to wrap around the gears. Now this was only an hour and I know this enclosure can get way hotter if we keep it going. But that is a significant jump in temperature on the stepper motors. If we were to leave this enclosure open, the stepper motors would continue to stay cool because they don't have this box trapping the heat so the without the enclosure the heat can dissipate so there are some issues that can be uh, had when printing in an enclosure and it's definitely something to think about if you're printing super high temperatures with materials like peak or PEI uh, some people uh, go as far as to water cool their stepper motors because they will get stupidly hot and that's a real thing. You can buy water cooling kits for NEMA 17 stepper motors and, well, really any stepper motors. But they, there are kits out there, and uh, they do have a legitimate purpose. So, granted, stepper motors, NEMA 17s, are designed to operate in excess of 100 degrees Celsius. But, eh, it's debatable whether or not sustained load at that temperature over the course of several years will degrade uh, the motors. They have approximately 10,000 hours of use time per motor before they are at a point where they're considered likely to completely fail. But there's nothing to specify at what temperature for how long. That number, that 10,000 hour number was assumed on an 8 hours per day workload so we'll have to see if there's any benefit to going to a different type of stepper motor well not a different type but one that is more efficient in terms of heat dissipation if there are other sorts of cooling methods that need to be employed to ensure reliability or if exotic methods of cooling are required for just enclosed printing in general so, all things to consider before getting an enclosure that I did not think of before I did.